Okay, well, doing some diagnostic here, I uh, found that this reset switch does not make uh, continuity when the uh, button's pressed. So I think I'm going to tear it apart, clean its contacts, and see if I can make it work again. Okay, so I got it apart and sprayed a bunch of contact cleaner in. You can see that's the contact making, making contact between um, this, this part of the contact and the bottom part, and that's, that's the terminal uh, going to the motherboard. And uh, the top side, I think, is the ground connection. I might have those backwards, but anyway, that's the connection. And I uh, scuffed it up both sides a little bit sprayed a bunch of contact cleaner in and it now has continuity okay i think i've got this straightened out i've got the cpu card and one of the 4k cards and its address jumper is set for the lowest uh, jumper position and one of the two serial cards placed in slot one not slot zero slot one which is a control card control card slot I think the card I have in there, um, let me check this other one. Okay, this one's jumpered for 1200 baht. Uh, this one is set up to use the user defined, one of the two user defined pins on that, which is wired up to the baud rate selector on the front, which is set for 1200 also. Um, with my, just uh, quickly, Put together serial cable to a USB serial converter. I've got TerraTerm running here, so I'm just going to turn this guy on. Look at that. We have life. Unfortunately, it, this is about all I can get it to do. It doesn't actually, like this should show up well for the documentation. Uh, we should type in M. It should echo M in a space. We're just getting M, no space. And it doesn't let us uh, type in the rest of it. It's like it uh, sends a, a new line or a carriage, carriage return and, and then the terminal software is putting in a new line or something like that. So it's not quite there, but it has life. Okay, so one by one, I added these uh, memory boards back in and um, between adding one, I powered it on and made sure that it still came up to the same uh, prompt and I got all the way to the last one this homemade 8k board and it seems to be working uh, actually let me use not the numpad here oh well okay maybe not I can't put in a number Okay, well I can dump the registers. So, all right, making progress, making progress. All right, so it looked like on the uh, CPU board, there are at least three different mods done. One of them appeared to be the uh, SWT bug ROM upgrade, which is definitely the case because the, uh, well, it says that on the, the ROM chip, but also the uh, prompt character here it would have been an asterisk if it was the MIC bug ROM. Okay, so let me reset it again this up so what I found is I, I think it is working um, so I do M if I use letters so like a hexadecimal address like FFFF that works it spits out the, mem the uh, value memory uh, location FFFF it just doesn't let me use um, whoops I guess I just stored an M into it whatever that is how do I stop this Okay, um, right, so if I do, I can't enter a zero, it just, it just didn't work. I, I can't type numbers at all, that was a one, it didn't work. Two, seven, nothing works, only letters. So, I'll have to look at my terminal settings with PuTTY or TerraTerm and see if there's something wrong um, with that, or maybe I need to do some troubleshooting on the uh, serial card. 
I really doubt it. Just the fact that it's getting letters back and forth from the terminal over the uh, back and forth over the serial interface to, to the terminal makes me think that it's working. So I'll, I'll keep troubleshooting this. Let's see. All right. So all I did was reboot it, and well, okay. Now I reseeded the the serial card, and now it's back to doing that thing that's not right. But I can totally type numbers. It was appearing to me that like it was only accepting values to display anyway and print back on the upper half of the ASCII chart with uh, bit seven being a one. And it was not happy with anything on the lower half. So I was kind of playing with some values and you know, I ended up rebooting it and now it, oh, Okay, I guess it booted up, but it won't take it won't take numbers. Super weird. I'll try swapping the serial cards out. If it does the exact same thing, then maybe it's a memory issue. If not, it might have something to do with the CPU card. I'll keep playing with it. Okay, I swap the serial card over, and it does exact same thing okay well I guess now I'll really play with it all right I'm thinking most of my problems here probably have to do with these oxidized connectors it seems like that's a pretty common problem with these types of computers so I'm gonna try to clean them up with some I guess some 220 grit sandpaper pretty fine uh, hit it with some of that um, got some contact cleaner. Maybe that'll help out. Okay, I finally got it working. And it turned out it was one of these um, uh, quad tri state bus transceiver ICs. So there's two of them. Each of them um, does uh, one nibble of the full 8 bit data bus. And uh, you, you can see here exactly what was happening. So D5 was stuck as a, well, okay, it was stuck in two different cases. When I didn't have this memory board installed, it was stuck as a one, and uh, which is why I could only get lowercase letters, but I could, do numbers and then when that memory board was installed which um well the bit was stuck as a zero meaning i could type capital letters such as capital m to do the memory command where it would uh, ask to enter in an address and i could enter in addresses only using the uh, a through f hex values i couldn't type any numbers without it um, kind of dumping me back out to the prompt. And so I had had my suspicions. I pr probed it with the oscilloscope and, and was, looked at each side of the transceiver and there were there was um, some kind of funny stuff going on in the trace. I didn't get any pictures of it, but, uh, and so what I did notice though was without this card um, stuck, it was stuck as a, a one it was like with this it was like the bit on or the the one output slash input on that one chip had was uh kind of weak and was it wasn't really working kind of maybe floating around and so without this one particular memory board maybe it was unloaded and it would be stuck in one position with this board installed it acted as a load, maybe, making it stick in the other direction. Anyway, I what I did to end up finding out the cause was swapping those two chips, and I could actually follow that. So these are all labeled seven through one. It should have been six through zero. Bit seven um, isn't isn't shown on this chart. And uh, anyway, so this is the the bit that was getting stuck was the uh, second from the bottom 
of the four uh, bits on this nibble. So if it was swapped down to down here, it'd be a bit two, well actually bit one, right? That should be zero and then one, uh, would, would be the one that's getting stuck or, or malfunctioning. And, uh, I, I swapped those two chips and I tested it in both cases, you know, with the memory board, uh, without, and sure enough, uh, this bit was getting stuck. I could enter, um, let's see here, depending on the case, right, uh, whether it was stuck as a one or a zero, I could enter these letters just fine, both capital and lowercase m's, um, but, you know, if I wanted to enter, for example, like, let's see, k, um, it would have um, popped out looking like a Y, or, a, or an I, I should say. So, and then vice versa with, with, with it being stuck in the one position, you know, I would, I would try to type, let's say, an L, and it would pop out um, as an N. Um, and I, here, here's a case that I actually did do. I, I would type an M, and it would come out as an, as an O, and that's, that's where this bit was stuck as a 1, so it was an O. So anyway, kind of the long version of, of what the problem was, and uh, the fix was... Well, it was actually two things, right? So one chip was good, one was bad, and I, I had some spares. And as I swapped them all, it was like all of the spares were bad. Like the uh, bit 5 would be good, but then others would have issues. And what we, we finally ended up doing was moving the good chip to this... Uh, Space, uh, th this part of this nibble um, socket, IC socket. So I ended up, I swapped them and then started taking my, my spares and then finding a good spare in there. And um, half my spares were bad, half were good. And the, the reason I think I had to swap it was because it's, it's very likely that the socket has some corrosion or some issues going on internally. I can't see from the outside, but um, it's working now, so I'm not going to mess with it. If I have future or problems with it in the future, then I will go ahead and uh, replace the uh, IC sockets. And if, if I take the motherboard out to do one, I'm just going to go ahead and do them all. But so it, it works. Uh, memory boards work. I did a simple RAM test. I was going to do one of the more advanced ones, but it was just going to take a little bit too long. And then uh, let's see what else did I do. Um, I installed the extra serial card. In fact, I just installed all the cards that I have just as like a, a load test sort of thing. Looked at the unregulated voltage and it's dropped to like 7.8 to 8 volts depending on what the computer is doing. And that seems fine to me. <clears throat> um, so I put the control board in, although, although I'm not sure I'll ever use it. Um, I got the uh, parallel port card just put in I haven't done anything with it and then the floppy disk the floppy controller card I'm planning on playing with this next um, I booted it up and I checked the voltage of the uh, 5 volt regulator ICs and all these and all those were good this one was not putting anything it was like half a volt so I went ahead and swapped it out to a new one and uh, it has voltage now so the uh, floppy drive controller and floppy drive unit is a project for another day. So right now we can see that it works and I can type numbers, letters, it's all all good. Um, so let's see this thing we're going to program. I'm not going to type one out here in machine language but I will use the load function to paste in um, a program here. I'm, I'm going to run 8K basic version 2.2. And it shouldn't take too long to load now that I'm running at 9600 baud, which uh, I found out was one of the mods that was done to the CPU card, was the 9600 baud mod, um, which 
uh, replaces the 150 baud um, connector or connection on the uh, the bus back there, which also includes this position here on the uh, switch. So okay, it loaded it. So if I hit G for go, here we are. We're in basic. List it. Looks good. Look at that. It works. Um, so let's let's have it run a basic program that's a little more interesting than that. Um, so I've I've found with uh, SWT PCs 8K Basic, it it's a little slower to respond to. Um, characters being sent over the serial port and in parsing that and new lines and I've I've found it works better um, with adding some some delays uh, in fact it needs I found it works best with a quite quite a large delay on the uh, per each line so um, like half a second um, so let's go ahead and paste this in I'll just type it out for me. It beats me typing it out by hand. Okay. Shouldn't have to list it, but just to see it. Cool. It's all memory. All right. Let's do it. Good luck so far. Man. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> All right. So uh, that's it. Um, that's the uh, SWT PC 6800 um, with 32K of RAM. Um, functioning, uh, next step will be the floppy controller card, um, probably try to get to run flex, maybe even look into running a, uh, a higher version of flex that requires a modification to be done to the CPU card, um, and I'll probably make a short video, um, kind of outlining the, uh, the various mods on the CPU card, motherboard, um, showing it on the schematics so that um, you can uh, get a better idea on what the uh, original owner had done to this thing.